First of all, uh, welcome back everybody to another webinar brought to you by your partners at HST and AHCP. And thanks for taking the time out of your day to invest in yourself and your business. I am Steve Tratner, and I'm really excited for today's session with Assurity. If you have any question during the presentation, please just enter those in the Q&A section. I'll do my best to watch those um, and also give David plenty of time to answer those uh, either throughout or at the end of his presentation. A um, couple things real quick. A lot of you are probably very familiar with Assurity. Assurity is a highly respected multi-billion dollar insurance company with an AM best rating of A minus. You're probably familiar with Assurity because of their market leading critical illness insurance, which a lot of us sell. It's got some slick riders like uh, their increasing benefit rider and the return of premium rider. But today, David Gokey is here from Assurity to help us help our clients by being more familiar with the surety's individual disability income insurance. If you're not familiar with this type of insurance, disability income insurance makes payments directly to your clients when they're unable to work and their income is jeopardized by a qualified sickness or accident. It is an automatic cross-sell opportunity whenever you sell a health accident or CI policy. This isn't an, indi I mean, excuse me, this is an individually issued product. So you're not selling this to large employer groups, which is the way most DI plans are sold. Now, I don't want to give away all of the best tidbits of this pro product, um, but right off the bat, you should know that you can write this on your clients that are up to 60 years old. And just like a surety CI plan, it offers super valuable benefits that are built into the policy, as well as some great rider options. I'd like to welcome David Gokey. Thanks so much for joining us. What do you have for us today on Assurity? Perfect. Well, um, just wanted to confirm that you guys can, in fact, hear me, uh, Steve. Uh, Perfect. And I'm really, I, I'm, I'm really excited to be here today. So thank you for, for letting us uh, uh, steal a little bit of your time, as is the case anytime I connect with a big group. I've kind of got two asks. My my first ask is you need to decide is if this is something that you can implement in what you're doing. And if that is the case, the contingent ask is you need to think of a client. Think of clients, think of past clients, think of future clients, think of where you can implement this. I've been in your shoes. Um, I've obviously been in my own shoes, but I want to make sure this is worth your time and worth mine. So again, that that would be my ask of you today is before we go uh, dive into things. So Assurity, and, and Steve kind of hit on this, uh, you know, we're 132 year old. We've been helping clients for over a century. And I think that means something. You can see our A minus rating against to be a little bit redundant. Um, I'm going to go through a couple of these slides pretty quickly because of the fact that Steve did a pretty great job of introducing me. We are a mutual company. I'm assuming most of you know what that means. I, I think that matters. I'll speak briefly to that here in a second. We're based out of Lincoln, Nebraska. Um, we're, we're a force for good. I'll speak to that as well. Um, but from a mutual perspective, by design, we are owned by our policyholders. Anyone who buys this product or the critical illness or whatever our suite of products that you're utilizing, they are by design owners of a surety. So obviously we are going to do what's in the best interest of our policyholders, which is a differentiator out there in the industry. I bring this next slide up. One of the things uh, for those of you who are in the life space, the RBC ratios are something that I think is very important. And also part of the reason I'm talking about who we are, you know, when if any of you guys sell life insurance, um, it's it's pretty black and white when it comes to the claims process. Either someone has passed away or they haven't. When it comes to critical illness or when it comes to disability, which obviously is our focus for today, there's a little bit more subjectivity associated with it. And so knowing that you're working it with a company that you can trust, when we have gray involved, when it's not black and white, when we have gray in our claims process, most of the time, if not all the time, we're going to defer or lean to, you know, what, you know, yes. helping the clients. And, and I think that matters. And one of the things as from a conservative, you know, one of the questions I get ever so often, or I used to get when I was in your shoes is, you know, how do I know this company's going to, you know, actually be there to pay out? 
well, again, we're, we're, we've been around for 132 years, but that, that RBC ratio, as far as I've seen, is the best RBC, the risk-based capital ratio in the industry that I've seen. I'm sure there's someone who's better, but I, I have not seen that. Uh, and that basically is how much, uh, how much capital we have on hand to be able to pay out uh, the, the you know, our clients that we are insuring. So this gives a little bit more idea. Um, and then again, hitting on a little bit more, the last thing of who we are, we're a certified B corporation. I'm not sure of, uh, I'm, I'm guessing most of you don't know what that means, um, but, but basically we took that mutual story and we took it a step further and we went out to the most stringent, strict third-party verifier of who a good carrier, a good company really uh, is. And, and, and that's, that's the certifi certification that we got. And so they look at people, community, and plan. It's one of the things I always like to point out is one of the things we do for our employees is we, we have PTO days where they, you know, they, they go and actually volunteer. We'll give out extra PTO days if they're volunteering. And I, again, I think that speaks to who we are. So uh, skipping through a few of these things, as to who I am and my internal, if you ever have any questions, don't reach out. Don't hesitate to reach out. Don't hesitate to reach out. Please reach out to me. <laughs> uh, that number, the 800 number, and then the extension, that will ring directly to my cell phone. It will ring directly to my cell phone. You have my email if I'm ever traveling, which happens actually to be today. Um, don't don't hesitate to reach out to my internal as well. Uh, love to be a resource for you as best we can. So today we're talking about short-term disability. That was quite the intro to finally get to the meat and potatoes here. Easy short-term disability insurance sales for, mar for modern markets. As far as I'm aware, on the individual side, to Steve's point, a lot of DI is sold on the works on, on the worksite side and the group and the group space. But as far as I'm aware, aware on the individual side, we filled a void that was completely empty for a couple years. There was no short-term disability product for about a couple years there. And when we introduced this about eight, nine months ago, so this is a pretty new product, we have seen tremendous success with it. We definitely filled the void in the marketplace, and we're happy to do just that. And so um, I'll, I'll open it up with... Um, uh, kind of an interesting statistic uh, I, I find interesting. One in, one in 20 adult working Americans will have a short-term disability. But that statistic is for each and every single year. And so when I think of why income protection, why short-term disability, you know, I mean, why disability as a whole, that's that's probably an hour presentation by itself. You know, we have probably the most robust DI suite of products, long-term graded benefits, BOE, et cetera. But, you know, why short-term disability? Why does that come into play? Well, for me, it's an easy, it's an easy sale. I have a personal story. I've been on a short-term disability claim. Nobody thinks that sort of thing is going to happen to them. And, and, and funny enough, at the, uh, at the age of 25, I was able to get a very, uh, got a best rate class uh, life policy put in place for, for me to, to protect my family. Two years later, I was diagnosed with cancer and went septic and was on my deathbed. Thankfully, that didn't come to fruition, and I'm here today. But what once was killing us, you know, i.e. cancer, is now causing us to get disabled. And that disruption to our lives, even without the financial component, can be quite drastic. And then when you throw in the financial components, uh, you know, probably given a little bit too much information on my own personal story, but you know, I, even to this day, I meet my deductible in January because of my cancer stuff that I still got going on here, you know, five, six years removed. And so the, the, you know, I, you know, it's funny when you get told you have cancer, well, it's not funny, but when you get told you have cancer, the first thing I thought of was, oh, thank goodness I have life insurance. But what did I use? I didn't use my life insurance policy. I used my disability policy. And I'm so thankful that I had a short-term disability product. So again, the, 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 the first thing a lot of people think of, it's not going to happen to me um, because most, most disabilities happen due to an illness. They don't happen due to an accident. I, most people, when they think of disability, think, oh, I'm, a, you know, I'm a safe driver. I'm a good driver. Um, I'm risk averse. I'm, you know, insert, you know, your risk averse activity. I don't do that. You know, skydive, all these different things. Well, guess what? That's a majority. That's a, that's a small percentage of when disabilities actually happen is due to Ill accidents. Most of them happen due to illnesses. And those are a lot of times are beyond your control like mine was. 
So that, that speaks a little bit about the why. Now, I, I will also say this, because I think this allows clients to put themselves into this shoe. And I'm, I'm sorry to spend so much time on the why. I think the why matters. I think a lot of times through these presentations we hear, I don't want to just do a product dump for you. And I'll get into a few strategies here in a moment. But as far as the why and a little bit of having your clients put themselves in this, their shoes, you know, think of a time, and I'll think of my own time. About a year ago, I went uh, on, on a vacation with my in-laws to kind of the up middle of nowhere, Michigan. And my purposely, my in-laws chose a place where the cell phone reception was not great. Uh, and there was no internet reception. And so I was removed from my work for about a week. You know, okay, poor David, he was on a weeks long vacation. My, my point is this, the amount of preparation, the amount of stress involved when, when you have a business, it, it, it's, it's stressful. And you come back to, you know, thousands of emails, you know, being removed like that, completely removed, it's tough. And I think a lot of people can relate to that, that feeling of being away from work, even just for a day, <laughs> how much things pile up. Now, imagine being thrust into that. Imagine being on a short-term disability claim for a week, two weeks, six weeks, you know, two years, what their situation would look like. So I'm kind of beating a dead horse here on this, you know, why income protection, why short-term DI? But I think, I think that part of the story matters, telling those stories, telling the statistics, and I'll go through a few statistics here in a second. But what I'm going to concentrate on today, what is this product? What is income protection? We're going to target who obviously we're targeting. Uh, and then ultimately where to quote, where to apply, because we have some pretty easy tools um, to be able to, to quote without ever, ever having to log in. So you'll be, uh, you'll have a, uh, you'll be grabbing a URL here by the end of, uh, by the end of here in about 15 minutes. So what is this product? Well, this is a short-term disability product. What do I mean by that? Well, it's a weekly benefit payment. Most disability products on the individual space uh, if not all out there, literally all of the rest on the individual space, we're going to pay out a monthly benefit. So this is weekly, meaning at the end of the elimination period, we'll pay out each and every week. You'll get your money quicker, faster. It's highly customizable, uh, really affordable. And I'll get into the components that we can pull certain levers and how to forge the affordability component. And then spoke about return or premium. We are a return or premium leader in the industry. Uh, for for term, for DI, for critical illness, et cetera. And then ultimately, this is portable, right? Uh, it's a portable policy, renewable to 65, conditionally to 75 if you're still working full time. So it's a built-in true ONOC definition. It's true ONOC, meaning it's not a modified ONOC. If for whatever reason, you cannot do your job, even if you could do a different job, making 10 times as much money, we are still going to pay you the benefit on this if you cannot do your job. Uh, we consider consider for multiple occupations. I'll speak to that. In my mind, the only flaw with this product, if there is one, and then I'll sp speak to maybe why there this isn't a flaw. The maximum weekly benefit is a thousand dollars per week. Thousand dollars per week. Now that is for a W two employee. It's actually a little bit less for even a, a self employed person, which is six hundred. So six hundred is the max per week for uh, self-employed or a thousand per week for a, a W-2. And then we have a, an array of elimination periods. Now, why I think it might not necessarily be a flaw is this next slide. With this product, there are no medical exams and there is no income verification, period. Not, not, we're, we're not gonna go ask for W-2s. We're not gonna, we're not gonna go, um, you know, being in kind of that intrusive uh, in, into their into their life and getting all those different details. Now we are gonna pull, it, it's, it's not to say we're not asking questions. The application is still an application. We're gonna ask health questions, but we're not gonna ask them to go out of their way to do the medical exam, to do the income verification process. And as a result, more times than not with this product, we're offering an instant underwriting decision. Meaning you do the e-application with your clients, you click submit, Within 30 seconds, normally, normally within about 30 seconds, a decision is rendered. Now, we can't do it every time. Uh, right now, we're running at a rate of about 70% of the time we're actually able to render that decision, that underwriting decision. And I will remind everyone on this call, a decision can still be a decline, right? If you have that one client that doesn't tell you they're a severe diabetic, insulin dependent, they just had a stroke two months ago, 
that is such an easy decline for us that will be an instant decline. Um, so, it, you know, it, 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 that's, you know, keep in mind for the instant decision, it can be a decline, but, you know, only about 20 to 30% of the time we're seeing that it's having to get pushed to an underwriter. And the only, I would say, I shouldn't say the only, the main reason that happens is because the clients fill out something on their application that contradicts something that we find over here, right? So they say they're not a diabetic, but we see that they're taking metformin. Nine out of 10 times, that does not add up. Maybe we, we just need to, maybe it's just a quick three-minute three, uh, three minute phone phone interview um, or or verification via email, a couple questions that we have. So more times than not, instant decision, but not quite always. So the nuts and bolts of the products. This is an accident and sickness product. It's going to be issue ages 18 to 60, like Steve said. Uh, age last birthday is what we look at. It's conditionally renewable to 75. So if someone got this at 60, they would have it through age 65. Um, and if they stopped working, uh, they they would not be able to continue past that point. Uh, but they, if they were working full time, they'd go through 75. Occupational classes. For those of you who might be green to um, disability insurance, we underwrite for health, but we also underwrite for occupation. And um, this isn't perfect. Four A's, uh, my, I'm about to give an analogy, or um, I guess I'll call it an analogy. Four A is the best. So someone like me, someone like Steve, more than likely everyone on the call is a four A. Um, one A is the worst. Think like a roofer. So the the, the analogy, or maybe lack thereof, um, it, the the example I was going to give is if you're if you can wear and this is not perfect, you'll be able to think of someone that does not fit this. But to give you a good start, if you can wear high heels or dress shoes, you're probably a 4A at work. That is if you can wear sneakers at work, you're probably a 3A. If you can wear if you're wearing boots at work, you're probably a 2A. If you're wearing steel toe boots, you're probably a 1A. Again, that's not perfect. I'll give you a great example. A chiropractor is a 1A to us. Chiropractors probably wearing dress shoes or or sneakers. So not perfect, but it's a great place to start. Um, maximum weekly benefits. I talked about that. 600 is the max for someone who's self-employed. Uh, a commissioned salesperson is someone like a real estate agent. We do real estate agents better than anyone in the disability insurance space. Uh, $1,000 weekly benefit for a W-2 employee. And then ultimately, again, what is this? This is a short-term disability product. So Benefit periods and elimination periods are going to be very short as a result. So three-month benefit period, six-month benefit period, one-year benefit period, and a two-year benefit period. And depending upon the benefit period, we have certain uh, elimination periods that we can meet uh, or have for the clients. A 07, obviously, is going to be the most expensive, but it'll allow the client to get their, their funds the quickest. Zero, zero being if they were disabled due to an accident. Seven if they were disabled due to a sickness. So that's why the slash is there. So zero slash seven, zero slash 14, or seven, seven, 14, 14, 30, 30, 60, 60, 90, 90. So those are the available elimination periods uh, to them. So that's kind of the nuts and bolts of what this product is. So now let's talk about who we are targeting and, and follow along closely. I'm gonna change slides here. It'll be a little bit confusing. So believe it or not, I did just change slides. We filed this product in a way for us to be what everyone thinks of as a disability product, an accident and sickness product. Or if the client so chooses, they could elect to have an accident only short-term disability product. Now I'm guessing some of you on the call are probably thinking, okay, why would anyone want an accident only DI product? Meaning it is only gonna ever pay out a benefit if the client was disabled due to an accident, not a sickness, right? So my cancer story, I would not be able to pay out on this product. So why would I want this? Two reasons. One, there are zero health questions. Meaning I, even though I had cancer here recently, I could actually get this policy. If I had cancer yesterday, I you know diagnosed yesterday, I could get this policy. I'm a insulin diabetic. Uh, insulin dependent diabetic, I could easily get this policy. Whereas the other ones, I would not be able, you know, the accident sickness version, I could not. So that's version number one. That's reason number one. There are no health questions. Reason number two, significantly cheaper. I talked earlier about the affordability component. This obviously is extremely affordable. Otherwise, everything is going to mirror. You'll notice the elimination periods. There's no slash because everything is only due to the elimination. If it's only going to pay out in the event it's due to an accident. So you know, believe it or not, 
while it's not quite as robust of a product, we are selling so much accident only short term disability. Uh, so, so, you know, kind of keep that in mind, obviously, for those riskier professions, it's a little bit more expensive, you know, that roofer of 1A, uh, a higher likelihood of a chance of falling off the ladder, higher likelihood of being able to claim on that as well, etc. So um, that's, that's that version, again, continuing on who we are targeting with it. So we have different benefits that are included in different riders that we are kind of using naturally to, to target. Um, I'm probably for time's sake, not going to go through all of these here. Total disability, if you cannot do the material and substantial duties of your job, you meet our definition of a total disability. Now, if you are partially disabled, again, these are built in. Everything I'm talking, everything on this screen is built in. Uh, I will note the asterisk there down at the bottom, though. Everything is built into this. If you're partially disabled, we'll pay out 50% presumptive disability. If you lost your eyesight, you lost your hands, you know, we we presumed you you to be disabled. There's a few other components to that. Waive your premium. We're going to waive premiums if you become disabled. I'll speak to childbirth benefit here in a second by itself. Uh, organ donor, if you get disabled due to donating an organ um, and social insurance offset. I'm not going to speak to that too much today. Uh, if you're choosing a one-year, a six-year, or a three-year benefit, regardless of whether workman's comp pays out, social security pays out, anything like that pays out, the client is still going to get all of their funds. The only reason uh, we would maybe reduce is if you elected this elected this social insurance offset on the two year benefit. So uh, I won't I won't dive into it more than that. We can feel free to answer questions following this. I'll have an extra fifteen minutes following the uh, the, the our, our eight minutes left today um, to answer any of those types of questions if we want to dive into that. So these are the optional riders. Um, the family care rider, I'll speak to that here in another slide, but this is the number one use rider. It's used about 50% of the time. It's, I would very much encourage it. Guaranteed insurability rider, uh, we are uh, allowing you to purchase more without having us to look at your health. Doesn't matter if you got cancer after you got the policy, if you have this rider, we can continue to add uh, benefits to this. Return of premium, that's somewhat self-evident. Retroactive injury, I'll skip that. Cat, I'll skip that too, but the state home spouse writer, I'll speak to that here in just a second as well. So focus on women's marketing. Um, I'll, I'll, this is something that's really important to me. My mother was the breadwinner. I've got two daughters myself. Uh, when I look at, you know, I, I think this is probably true of pretty much the industry as a whole, no matter what products you guys are selling, life, critical illness, DI, et cetera, women are significantly underinsured in the marketplace. And something that's really sad about uh, a statistic that I'm going to share is we focus in on occupations. We do, for example, nurses better than any other DI carrier out there. We're the best with nurses. And we focus in on kind of what is known as that pink collar type of worker, those occupations that are held traditionally by more than 75% of women, 75% uh, women relative to, to men. And so knowing that we focus in on those occupations, that we do those better than anyone, it's a really sad statistic that over 75% of all of our applications are still on men. And so I think with this product, we have, you know, a way to potentially help, help alleviate that, help make it a little bit more even. Now, I will say this, the built-in childbirth benefit, I'm going to explain what that is here in just a second. I will say this, this is not a maternity product. If someone is wanting this just because they're wanting to have a kid and no other reason, this simply is just not that product that they're looking for. And that product just simply does not exist in the individual marketplace. Um, I can expand on why we decided not to do that later, but ultimately the, the, the benefit for having a child, for birthing a child specifically, is very small relative to maybe a group policy short-term disability uh, benefit. They're able to spread that risk. The, the short answer is they're able to spread that risk, whereas an individual policy, we would see a lot of uh, people targeting this product. We'd see anti-selection significantly with this. And as a result, we'd have to bump up the premiums. So what is the birth, childbirth benefit? Essentially, it's a maximum one-time payout. It's only going to pay out one time. If you yourself birth a child, not adopt, not, I'm not birthing a child anytime soon. If, I, if my wife uh, has, you know, she... I would have to be a woman having a baby. Um, if I birth that child, we will send out a maximum of $500 or 
two times the weekly benefits. So if I had a $200 weekly benefit, I'm going to get a $400 check if I birth a child. So $500 is the max. So you can see that's, it, it's nice. It's kind of like a, uh, it's a nice gift from us to you. It's not the, the reason you're buying it, but I would say it's actually knowing that benefits there, especially if you are going to have kids, it's a really nice benefit uh, for how inexpensive this policy is. Uh, the family care rider, I like this rider, um, given the fact that if my wife would have had her products like this in place, or that family care rider uh, could have used it. So um, let's say my wife bought this policy. I have cancer. She goes on family medical leave. She could actually get 50% of her short-term disability benefit, even though she's not disabled because she's taking care of a parent, a spouse, or a child. And it's got to be on FMLA leave. So she's on FMLA leave to take care of a parent, a spouse, or a child and has this policy with this writer, the optional family care writer. Even though she's not disabled, she can claim and get 50% of the weekly benefit for the time she's out on FMLA. And then last but not least, the optional stay-at-home spouse writer. This writer, essentially, it is it is a writer. It is not its own policy, but it's going to mirror the primary insured's writer or primary insured's policy up to a maximum of $250 per week. Um, and so you don't have to be a stay-at-home mom or stay-at-home dad to have this writer, uh, but oftentimes we're seeing that elected. And, and if you can't do the material and substantial duties of your job, if you can't take the kids to school, if you can't uh, you know, go down the stairs, do the laundry, wh whatever it is, if you can't do your job, we're going to pay out, which I think is is great. So continuing on who we're targeting, um, and I know we're wrapping up here soon, um, trying to speed up a little bit, but we're, we're focusing at, you know, one of the things that we can do, which I think is really unique, and I think it is extremely unique and maybe one of the only ones products out there. If you are um, I mentioned to Steve, I'm in a Starbucks presenting right now because I'm in, in between meetings. If if you're a barista at Starbucks working 15 hours a week, and then you're an Uber driver working 15 hours a week, as long as you are working a total of 30 hours per week across eligible occupations, we can insure you. And that is really unique because usually we need 30 hours within one occupation. So really excited about that. We see a lot of utilization around that, especially in the gig economy that we're in. Um, we also see a lot of people coupling this with a, a long-term disability product or a critical illness product. We love that. Uh, very much encourage it. Um, so here's a couple ideas. So, you know, there's that statistic out there. It's like, what, less than 5% of foreclosures on conventional loans on homes, obviously, in the United States are due to the death of the homeowner. Yet we see almost 50% of foreclosures are due to a disability, right? So how, you know, with that in mind, I don't know what this gentleman's name is. We'll call him Bob Smith. 33-year-old um, freelance web developer making 85 grand, just bought a home. Not much uh, to his name aside from his home, little in savings, um, you know, some student loans as well. He wants to make sure he can't, doesn't have to leave his home if he gets disabled. So here's a policy. It's an accident and sickness policy. $600 weekly benefit, 30-day elimination, one-year benefit period, $37. Another idea, 30-year-old, married to a 27-year-old, very young, only making $50,000 between the two of them. She's a stay-at-home mom, two young kids. Again, going back to that affordability, covering him almost $600 a week, 14-day elimination, one-year benefit period, covering her on an accident-only policy, less than the cost of them going out to McDonald's as a family. So that's that's the who. We talked about the who, what, we talked about the who, now the where. So this link right here, and I'm gonna go through it real quick and then I'll finish with that. And I see I have a few questions, um, but I'm going to pull up real briefly. So if you type in, and very much ever encourage everyone. And Steve, maybe you could type this in the chat, assurity.com forward slash IP, I for income, P for protection. If you type that in, that'll redirect you to this site right here, which is a lot more difficult to remember instead of assurity.com forward slash IP. But if you type, if you go into the URL and go here, there's nothing preventing you from seeing this right now. There's no paywall or not paywall. There's no uh, login wall. So you can go and you can run a quote. Income protection, accident only. Income protection, accident sickness. Talks about the process. Get a quote, send a quote, complete an app. 
talks about the, again, continued on. If you have any questions, again, please feel free to reach out to me and my team. Obviously, you can always reach out to a surety. So let's run through a quick quote so you have a look and feel. I'll just run Alabama since it's the top. I will say this. New York and California are the only two states that this is not available in. New York and California. California will likely get changed here probably in Q4. I'm 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 hearing some good things on them approving everything and getting through. So Alabama, 35, male, non-smoker. Um, let's say I am uh let's say I'm a nurse, a hospital nurse specifically. If I was a clinic nurse, I'd be a professional, but I'm a hospital nurse. I'm making a hundred thousand uh, dollars by could type. And then at this point, it's going to come back with two options. That's not to say you have to only choose these two options. But this gives you an idea. Thousand dollars, thousand dollar weekly benefit, 14 day elimination, 14, 14, 14, 14, but a 13 week benefit period, 26 week benefit period. So let's say this is kind of what I'm looking for. 80 bucks a month. I like this. Uh, 14, 14 is probably the most elected elimination period, at which point, again, I can change all any of this. You know what I like the you know what? I like the idea of a two year benefit period, and I like the idea of yeah let's do let's do thirty thirty. But you know what I I really don't need a thousand I don't need you know over four thousand dollars a month. Let's just go to five hundred. And then I talked about the affordability of that family care rider. So we'll see seventy one ninety family care rider seventy five thirty nine. Pretty inexpensive to add that, and and we see it about utilized about half the time. You know, if we come through, you know what? I'm actually a 34, so you can kind of get the 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 gist of how this looks and feels. You know what? I'm actually an account. I'm a, a clinical nurse, not a hospital nurse. You know, you can see that it's going to affect you know affect the pricing um, for for the better in this particular situation. If I'm a roofer, that's going to affect it uh, sizably. Uh, and then I'm not going to go through it right now because I know we're past time by one minute. But if I were to click apply now, it's going to go through kind of a pre-screening questions without going into the application. You answer those questions. I'll give you a look and feel of what those questions, you know, are we a U.S. citizen? Uh, state government employees is probably the only subset of the marketplace that we cannot insure. So we got to be a no there. Um, and we got to be U.S. citizen or permanent resident. Uh, but then it's, you know, going through some quick questions. We don't want to, rather than have a, a decline on your record, let's just go through some knockout questions quickly and. And then, and then you'll click apply now. When you click apply now the second time, that's when we need you to log in. We want to make sure you are getting paid for this. So with that, I think that's all I had for you. I apologize for going a little bit long. No, what, that was great, David. What, very, what very questions? informative. You, you, you made it so easy to understand. Uh, there is one question here yes. still. Um, why are W-2 employees a little bit more? Uh, why did they qualify for a higher benefit? Yeah, that's that's kind of just industry norm uh it, it has everything to do with the fact that we're not taking uh we're not looking at w or we're not looking at income verification is the primary reason for that um so when i look at my long term disability product it's almost the exact same numbers as on a, you know if we translate them to a monthly benefits so $2500 is the maximum we could do without income verification on our long term di products and then 4,000 for a W-2 employee. So if you divide that roughly by about four, you get close to the the, the $400, uh, the $600 uh, in the $1,000. Mm -hmm. And so to, to get at the root of it, ultimately, um, it's all, you know, we see a lot of, as a business owner, there's a higher likelihood of you maybe not telling us and being completely honest, whether it be do your tax return, you know, how you fund, uh, file your taxes, um, if not being completely honest with how much you make. Uh, so there's a little bit more tight scrutiny on uh, income verification. And ultimately what it stems for, this is probably way too long winded of an answer. Ultimately what it stems from is when it comes to disability insurance, we wanna make sure we're not over insuring you based off your income because then it creates a little bit of an incentive for you to potentially hurt yourself uh, and, to, to, and to not work. So that's where the ultimate component stems from. And that would imply, though I could have this wrong, that you also don't uh, verify income at time of claim. Is that right? Oh, most definitely. We do not. We do not verify income at time of claim. That is a hundred percent correct. And then actually, here's here's kind of a something that I I confirmed multiple times. You could actually, in theory, be retired, and and if you cannot do your job, 
uh, you know, let's say you retired and you still had this policy six months later, if you could not do the job that you were just doing six months ago, you could still go on claim even though you retired. And now I don't know why you'd probably still have this policy if you were, you know, you'd probably get rid of the need for paying the premiums, but we do not verify income at time of claim. Awesome. Thanks for that. All right. So there's a bunch more questions coming in right now. Um, first of all, I'll let everybody know that we will distribute a copy of this recording. Uh, it'll take a couple of days for us to wrap that up, but we will get this out to uh, all the registrants and also the people who are unable to make it today. Uh, here's a question. If we are already contracted with the surety, do we already have access to this product? I think the answer is yes. Is that correct, David? Yes. Okay. Um, how do you get contracted? Through your normal link with HST and AHCP, uh, you'll find them on the website um, or through your manager. Restaurant owner, light labor. Also, why is chiropractor a 1A? I think chiropractors uh, generally are high claimants, aren't they? Yes, they are notoriously bad at claiming for disability insurance. Most carriers won't even accept them full stop. They won't even consider a chiropractor. We are very unique that we can even consider a chiropractor. Um, so it, it kind of keep that. There's, there's. Um, I, I'm sure you could probably even probably Google why chiropractors aren't able to get DI very easily or at a very reduced rate or expensive rate. Um, to answer, you know, restaurant owner, light labor, um, you know, expanding on that. If you go to that website, again, assurity.com forward slash IP, and you go through the second portion, kind of that field underwriting portion, one of the things it's going to ask, it's going to, you know, kind of more basic stuff than it gets into health questions. I haven't had a heart attack or stroke. I haven't been diagnosed with cancer. And then don't, don't, don't freak out. People see COVID and they, they see six months in COVID. No, has the insured uh, been hospitalized due to COVID or one of these in the last six months? So no, no, no. Once you get to that, it's going to say, you can click next, but then it's going to essentially ask kind of more occupational questions. Because if we're self-employed, that's going to knock us down to 600. It's going to edit the illustration. Um, but let's say I'm an employee of, an, of a business. I'm not a government employee. We would want to see, okay, what type, you know, we could still offer as long as you're not state. But if you click this drop down, it'll give you a very large, these are just obviously the A's, you know, air traffic controller. Air, I mean, it's pretty extensive. So if you have a specific occupation that you want to look at, simply just type it in. You know, in an auto, it'll auto fill, right? An accountant or account bill and account collectors, bookkeeping, counting, new. So feel free to go through that experience. Um, and, you know, let's say I'm an accountant, although I guess let's, anyways, I don't need to go through that. Hopefully I'd answer that question for time's sake. Yep, I won't go through. Yep, very good. Um, real quick, uh, if I don't want to go through this generic quoting link, uh, don't I have a personal URL that I can log in and, and run quotes? So the, if you go to assurelink.assurity.com mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll uh, show, actually, I just have, it's assurelink.assurity.com rather than typing in, I'll, I'll log into it really quickly. So for this product and really this product and one of our other accident, uh, accidental death and short-term DI are the only two products that you go to a different site to quote everything else our term, our UL, our whole life, long-term DI, greater benefit DI, um, critical illness, uh, everything else, you go to Life Portraits Illustrations, but if you log into our system and you type this, you click on this, it's gonna bring you to the exact same link as the oh. assurity.com forward slash IP. So it this is the site to quote the short-term DI products. Everything else though, uh, whoever asked that question, uh, they were correct. There is a kind of a more of a geared, uh, specific to to them got it okay uh do this cover accident illness that is also covered under workers comp so is, is there any kind of coordination of benefits so it, yes and no so i had kind of talked about this with that one writer the social insurance offset the mm -hmm. supplemental disability income writer i think is what it's called in this this version of the product um if elected on the two-year benefits so it's only available on the two-year benefit. Um, if you got a claim from Social Security or Workman's Comp uh, or Railroad or something along those lines, we would reduce the benefit from that. Now that is only on the two-year and only if elected. Now, why would, okay, why would I ever uh, wanna elect that? Well, if you do elect that, that, that uh, rider, 
Uh, essentially, what it, it'll lower the premium. It'll allow us to make a cheaper policy for you. So on the three month, six month, uh, one year benefit period, doesn't matter if more workman's comp pays out, doesn't matter if Social Security, it doesn't matter if anything else pays out. If you cannot do the material and substantial duties of your job, we will pay out. Um, so hope that answers that question. Yep, very good. I think uh, there's a great comment in here, um, but that's it for any of the questions. Anybody else? Give you a last minute or two to type that in. And I'll even go back to uh, my my slide of my contact information. So again, don't don't hesitate to to reach out. I don't know if I deleted that or where did that go. <laughs> uh, here it is. So don't hesitate to reach out if you if you have any questions. Um, when I'm not available, my internal is very available. Love to help. Obviously, Steve's a resource, and everyone else on the on the team is a resource. But um, love to, you know, we are selling this. We are selling a lot of this, both the accident and sickness, and the accident only version. Again, you have to decide up front which way you're going to go. Uh, but it's it's a great product, and we're really excited and and mm -hmm. and, and love partnering with you guys. So thanks, Steve. Uh, there was one follow up question on the yes. pregnancy coverage. Yes. Um, maybe you could summarize what you said earlier. Yes. So again, if how we it, the maximum we are going to pay out if someone has births a child, if someone births a child, we will pay out a maximum of five hundred dollars in a lump sum one time, and we will only pay out, for example, four hundred dollars if they had a two hundred dollar weekly benefit. So whatever their weekly benefit is times two with a maximum of $500 paid out with receipt of a birth certificate at a surety. And I will say this, you cannot be pregnant at time of application to receive that benefit. So if we receive a birth certificate inside the first 10 months of you having this policy, well, that's when we're gonna have some problems. Um, but otherwise, two times the weekly benefit with a maximum of $500 with receipt of a birth certificate. Shoot, it, you don't even have to be out of work for, you know, I, my wife was kind of crazy on my first child. She was a business owner. Um, she was back to work at like a week and a half. Just that, that's fine. As long as she submitted the birth certificate, we would send out a maximum of $500 or two times the weekly benefit. Hopefully that answered that. If it doesn't, you and I, whoever asked that question, please reach out to me and we can we can walk through that a little bit more. Perfect. All right. I think this is a great place for us to wrap it up. Thanks, everybody, for participating today. I love it when we get such a big group at our webinars. Uh, if you have any more questions, feel free to either call David or Kevin directly. Um, of course, you can always call your HST broker rep or AHCP uh, broker department. We're happy to help you out however we can. Thank you again for all your time today. Bye-bye, everybody. Thanks, guys.